I'll be blunt, this is probably one of the better four stars in Honkai Star Rail. I'm talking meta-wise, for you, maybe she's just your best girl. Maybe you absolutely love nerdy anime characters for their quick wit and unmatched intelligence. Well, unfortunately, Bela isn't real, and she won't help you finish that essay that you've been putting off. If you've been wanting to build Ice Sucrose for a while, or just unsure of what she does in the first place, you're watching the right video. Today we're going to go over why Pela is an insanely powerful unit in Honkai Star Rail, and how to build her. As a heads up guys, I go live on Twitch a few days a week, where I test a lot of this stuff personally, so if you do want to come hang out, the link is going to be in the description. With all that being said, my name is Braxophone, and let's talk about Pela. If you are already main this character, or you want to main this character, you've probably already read over her entire kit for fun like she would. But maybe you'll learn something anyways, who knows. What makes Pela broken is a combination of things. She's a nihility character, which means that she can use the resolution shines as pearls of sweat like cone to shred enemy defense. Oh my god, that was kind of hard to say. But she also has built-in defense shred in her kit. If you didn't know, defense shred in many cases can be better for your team's overall damage output than something like an attack buff on one character. This isn't always the case, but a lot of the time, because everyone on your team benefits from the defense shred against one enemy, it can mean more damage. And when you combine that with the fact that eventually you see diminishing returns on things like attack buffs, and that there's not many sources of defense shred in the game, and that it also plays differently into the damage formula, defense shred is an incredibly powerful utility that I think not enough people People know about. Now just to clarify, I'm not saying that she's better than Tingyu nor Branya by this, she just brings a different kind of value. Lowering enemy defense is also an indirect buff to your whole team targeting that enemy, and Pela makes that super easy. Hey guys, Brax is editor here. Brax is out touching grass right now, but he wanted to reiterate that Pela shreds all enemy defenses. His examples were all talking about just one enemy, so he wanted me to let you guys know that she's not just single target. Her basic attack is pretty mid, but her ultimate shreds defense, which is pretty dang broken and doesn't cost a lot to use. On top of that, her skill is kind of low-key overpowered because it can just remove a buff from an enemy. Early on in the game, you might not need it. You might be thinking, well, this doesn't seem that helpful, but when you start getting to a lot later in the game, there are bosses that buff their own damage or have effects to revive themselves and you can just remove it. Poof, it's just gone. Specifically with the enemies that revive themselves, she also allows you to use Zilla into them because Zilla can actually secure their kills, and for other characters, she's effectively saving your team from taking as much damage as they normally would by removing enemy attack or damage buffs. Now just to be clear, there are some buffs that can't be removed, like this one in Simulated Universe, but many of the buffs can be removed. Earlier on in the video I mentioned that Pela's ult is really easy to get to, which part of it is her build, but the other part that makes it really easy is her talent that gives her a bonus 5 energy back whenever she attacks an enemy that has a debuff after her attack resolves. You might think that that only applies to the defense buff, but damage over time effects also count as debuffs. So if you have literally any dots ticking from skills or weakness break or any other debuffs on the enemy, you can assume your Pela is getting 25 energy per basic or 35 energy per skill. Now our technique is pretty cool, it basically jump scares enemies like every other technique, but these enemies will lose 20% of their defense, which is understandable because I too am afraid of people that play Tears of Themis. It has a 100% base chance to work, and if the enemy has an ice weakness, it's most likely going to be the best thing to initiate with. Pela's traces are also all very useful, and you're going to want to grab them all. Bash is going to give her more damage bonus against debuffed enemies, and the secret strategy is going to increase your team's effect hit rate by 10%, which can be very helpful for characters like March 7th, for example, to get freeze. Wipeout is yet another damage bonus in her kit, and it's pretty helpful. She's also pretty skill point efficient, you don't need to use her skill all of the time unless you're in content where enemies are constantly buffing themselves, so she can allow you to run some skill heavy damage dealers. In the early game, all of Pela's kit in tandem allows her to dish out okay personal damage even though she's going to be built like a support. With that said though, her damage falls off pretty hard in late game, so you'll just want to focus on her utilities. She is 100% a character that's going to be worth building that you'll use a lot in later content. Her Eidolons don't affect her playstyle a ton, so I'll talk about them towards the end of the video, but for now, let's talk about how to build Pela. Early on in the game, there isn't really a right way to build Pela. Effect hit rate is good for confirming landing her defense debuff, but you can really just give her as much attack as possible, and she'll probably be fine. When you start farming relics around Trailblaze rank 40 though, you'll want to farm a specific set and stats. Unlike me since I graduated college, Pela gets value for simply existing and is really good at her job. She doesn't need insane stats to be good. Since there is no dedicated set for her, it can look a little bit confusing to figure out what's best, but don't worry, I got you. She actually just wants Eagle of Twilight Line. 
Yes, I'm serious, it's not a joke. Pela isn't wind type, so the two piece is useless, but because Pela is a support that wants to use her ultimate frequently, you're more concerned about giving her the best uptime possible for her ult, and also using her to generate more skill points. Eagle of Twilight Line moves her action forward by 25% whenever she uses her ult, which means that she can get her next ult slightly sooner and also generate more skill points for your team or remove buffs more frequently. There's also the other option of using something like Guard of Weathering Snow if your pale is too squishy, but the action forward does come in handy pretty frequently. Now, something that not a lot of people know is that 100% base chance doesn't actually mean 100% chance for an effect to land. Enemies can have an effect resistance stat that will make your 100% chance not actually 100%. If you want to guarantee that you hit an effect, you're going to definitely need more effect hit rate on your character. And even then, it might not work 100% of the time. Luckily for her, Pela gets a lot of effect hit rate in her traces. Once you get all of her traces, she gets about 20% effect hit rate on her own, and because of that, for most content, she actually doesn't need a ton more. However, in late game content, and because that's what this guide is focused on, it's important to acknowledge that many enemies will have incredibly high effect resistance. If you use Pela's ult and it gets eaten and nothing happens, you're gonna be sad. It's also important to acknowledge that Pela is very squishy, as she has the lowest HP stat of all the Nihility characters and the second lowest defense. Remember that in this game, unlike Genshin, enemies always have a chance to hit back, unless you permanently freeze them or something. Because of this, the build that I recommend is Effect Hit Rate Body, Speed Boots for more attacks and skill points, an Energy Regen Rope to get your ultimate much more frequently, and for the last piece, you can use any sphere. Yep, I mean it, any sphere at all. Here's the thing, Pela's personal damage is pretty negligible. In late game with level 80 Pela and level 8 traces, this is the damage you can expect to output with an attack, damage, and HP or defense sphere. To those of us really early on who think this damage is a lot, keep in mind that this is a fully built Pela with high level relics, talents, and light cone. Compared to the other characters that you would be running with Pela in the first place, Pela's overall team contribution through her personal damage is pretty minimal, and taking even a 50% cut to her personal damage isn't going to hurt the team that bad when you're exchanging it for her personal survival. So for that reason, I actually just recommend picking the sphere that has the highest speed and effect hit rate substats, regardless of whatever the main stat is. So once again, that's going to be effect hit rate body, speed boots, sphere with the highest speed and effect hit rate substats, and an energy regen rope. With this in mind, Pela has two main planar sets available to her. Pan Galactic Commercial Enterprise, try saying that three times fast, is a solid choice for her if you go the damage route with a cryo damage sphere, just because it's going to get you around a 20% or higher attack bonus after taking into account your relics and substats, while also increasing effect hit rate. This basically just means that as long as you're building effect hit rate on Pela, you're able to get some more damage out of her because she gets an attack buff. It's kind of the best double dipping set for her. As an alternative option, Fleet of the Ageless is an amazing support set that you should probably have four of on your account. It gives attack bonus to your team and can stack with other characters using the same buff, and you really can just throw it on any support characters you want. The damage difference between these two isn't that big. I would recommend Pan Galactic most, but you can use Fleet of the Ageless if you don't want to bother farming for it. Pela honestly isn't that complicated to build, I just wanted to go over everything so you understood exactly why we make the decisions we do when we build Pela. But I don't blame you if you need to go rewatch or something. Luckily for you, the light cone section we're about to get into is much shorter. So one of the biggest downsides of Nihility and of building Pela is that Nihility, is that Nihility doesn't really have great free-to-play options. Pela's best option for Light Cone is Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat, which is a gacha cone that has a chance to lower enemy defense. It could be argued the best Nihility cone in general because that effect is just so busted for a weapon to have in the first place. Like seriously, the fact that you could just shred defense by having a character on the field, that it could be any character as long as they're Nihility, I don't know, that seems insane to me. Other than that, Eyes of the Prey can be solid for its effect hit rate, and it can let you run something like attack percent on your body if you want to, at least in early game. In late game, you're still going to want effect hit rate. We Will Meet Again can be decent for Pela to add to her personal damage, but her attack stat is already going to be pretty low, so other than that, just use whatever light cone you have with the highest stats. I'm sure later on there will be more clear options for Pela, but at the moment it's all up in the air. Just one quick note on In the Name of the World, since Pela's skill isn't a percent chance to remove a buff, and it just always works against buffs that are able to be removed, the effect hit rate on skill doesn't really matter much. It's still a solid cone, it has good base stats, so you should use it if you have it, but I don't want people to get confused about it. 
Uh, that's basically it. That's that's the entire light cone section. You're welcome. Next up, let's talk about where you can fit Pela into teams and where she gets the most value. So the thing about Pela is that because like many other characters, she is a supporting unit, she can fit into most teams and any team that you basically need her in for any particular content. So if you're clearing out enemies that have that revival skill that I mentioned before, you can use her to dispel that and you can throw her in any team. However, there's basically two team archetypes where she shines really well. And the first one is going to be anything that has ice break because you can use her and March together to basically break through ice very, very easily. You have two characters here that are very good. You have a preservation character that'll keep you alive and allow you to taunt, and you also have Pela. But also if you have someone like Yensheng, this team gets even better because then you have a character that deals a lot of ice damage and Pela and March are both going to also help with that ice break. So this is something to keep in mind if you're against a boss that has ice break and you only need this one team, then you can use these three characters in tandem and it will help you break through that enemy's resistance really, really fast and also help you with freezing them a lot, which is also really nice. Now for the fourth slot, it could be just basically anything you want to build. Uh, you could play Arlen here for skill point saving, or you could just play a healer if you wanted to be safe, or you could play someone like Branya. And now this is getting dangerously close to one of Pela's best teams, which is going to be basically slotting her into any team as a support for hyper carry units. So if you look over here, we have Sila and we have Branya. These two in tandem are amazing. Branya is going to buff your crit damage and just your overall damage with Sila. And she's going to be able to move up Sila in the priority to get more attacks or move up anyone that you might need. The point of a hyper carry team is that you can take one character like Sila, for example, and just buff the ever living heck out of them or just reduce enemies stats. So that way they can just one shot and clean up. And even if they don't one shot, you know, just clean up quickly, deal lots of damage. You guys know the drill. So the reason you'd play Pela here instead of Tingyun is one of two reasons. The first one might be that maybe the enemy doesn't have electric weakness, but does have ice weakness, or uh, you don't have Tingyun, which is a problem that I have. So if the game hasn't given you Tingyun, you can slot in Pela. And though you're not going to be able to buff Sila specifically, you will be able to debuff enemies, which will help Sila secure some kills. And that is going to be very helpful for her and her resurgence passive, as well as just dealing a ton of damage. It's not going to be as strong as Tingyun because Tingyun is just kind of broken and an absurdly good unit. But defense shred is something that's very good. And you will end up using it a lot when you get to a lot of the higher end content. Now, speaking of that hyper carry team concept, you can also do something like this with Clara and March. This is kind of an in-between of just some enemy needing ice break and you bringing two of those units, but also being able to play with Clara because Clara deals so much damage. Because Clara outputs so much damage, this is basically the same team concept as over here, but with the main difference being that March is going to help Clara get most of the damage taken on herself. So that way you don't have to worry about bringing a healer in the first place. This may not work as well in high-end content right now, but when everyone's level 80 and when we have more tools to help bring Taunt to one particular character, this can be useful. And then if you're like me and you need uh, Tingyun, then you just go over here and you scroll down and then you hit add and then you have Tingyun, guys. It's like she was here the whole time. Tingyun's gonna help Clara out a lot. Pela is going to help shred enemy defense. And this is going to be one of her primary roles. So with that said, these aren't the only teams you can run Pela in, but that is something that Pela does really well is shred enemy defense and help you deal a lot more damage with your hyper carries. And that's where I'd recommend using her, especially if you don't have either Branya or Tingyun. She can be a really good fill in there. So hopefully this was helpful, like uh, March and other characters that are in supporting slots and not damage dealing slots. You can just kind of fit her into any team, but I hope this gives you some ideas as to where to use her best. If you pulled Pela Eidolons, you either got lucky on Sila's banner or you got unlucky and now your Jingyuan fund is not looking so hot. Either way though, I I'm going to tell you about it because it's my job, it's what I do. Her first Eidolon makes it so that when she defeats an enemy, she generates 5 energy back, which means that if Pela deals a finishing blow, her ult comes up a bit faster. It can be hard to make this work with her, but occasionally you'll get some bonus energy. Now for Eidolon 2, she gets a speed buff for 2 turns when she removes a buff from an enemy with her skill, which is pretty decent for generating skill points over longer fights, but in super late game fights where you have a turn limit, that 10% speed buff may give her an extra turn or it may not, it just really depends. Eidolon 3 levels up her skill and basic attack, and E4 is where she actually gets a lot of value from her Eidolons. She gets a 100% base chance to reduce ice resistance on enemies after using her skill, which will be incredibly valuable in teams that have ice damage dealers. Now at the moment we basically only have Yan Qing, but later on when we have more characters in the game this becomes even better. Her 5th Eidolon levels up her ult and talent, and E6 gives Pela a bit of personal damage against debuffed enemies. With E6, you might be able to make the argument for an attack percent on the sphere, but once again, her damage is already kind of negligible, so you can get this E6 and you can deal slightly more damage with her, but overall it's not a game changer. 
Halo's Eidolons don't actually add too much, but even at E0, her base kit is really good, and E4 will help your team's ice damage. I don't recommend specifically pulling for her Eidolons, but you do you, I guess. Right now in Honkai Star Rail, there are tons of amazing support units that you're going to want to bring along at some point in your journey. This is mostly just for type coverage, but also there's just so many good support characters, and Pela is one of them. There are a lot of enemies in this game that are weak to ice, which really does help Pela's case, but what also helps Pela's case is that Defense Shred is just such a broken utility. If you don't have access to a character like Bronya or Tingyun, Pela can fill that spot and increase your damage, but on top of that, she's always going to be good in late game against enemies that buff themselves because any sort of guaranteed buff remove is an insane utility. And for those reasons and more, I really think that Pela is an amazing character and you should definitely invest in her in Honkai Star Rail. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed, make sure to subscribe down below, click like on the video, comment if you're playing Pela or building Pela, and feel free to come hang out on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash if you have any questions or I, I don't know, if you're cool as hell. If you're cool as hell, come join us over there. It's gonna be fun. But until then, I'll catch you guys next time.